Apple yesterday introduced the new iPhone 16 lineup, and as we've done every year since 2015, we're going to dive into it and take a look at the connectivity changes. This year, the headlines are Wi-Fi 7, satellite messaging, and digging into the specs, we found an interesting cellular regression. Stay tuned for the details. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, here to give you the news about the iPhone 16 that pretty much no other sites focus on. Everybody else is covering the cameras and the screen and the new colors and uh, the new CPU and all that sort of stuff. And that's a lot of where the Apple's focus is and on the new Apple Intelligence uh, AI features and all that. Here at the Mobile Internet Resource Center, we don't focus on that stuff. We focus on mobile internet and connectivity. And Every year since 2015, we've kind of dissected the iPhone news to dive into what's new on the connectivity front. And this year, just like last year, there's not a whole lot new on the cellular front. In fact, the, the new iPhone 16 on paper looks almost identical on the cellular capabilities as the iPhone 15 last year and the iPhone 14 before that even, with the only significant change that we found going through the spec sheets being there is a band missing, a cellular band, LTE band 46, which was known as LTE LAA, License Assisted Access. This was the LTE band that let the carriers overlay 4G signal on top of the same spectrum that would normally be used by Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz. So this in the 4G era, and it kind of rolled out in 2017, 2018, allowed for a really fast turbo boost of 4G, but only over a very short distance. But still the carriers had deployed um, this band in quite a few places. We saw evidence of AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile using this for some of their fastest speeds. And it's been in use for a while, but well, it's missing from the iPhone 16. So kind of an interesting mystery to see this band disappear from the specs that has been supported on um, every iPhone for many, many years now. Um, what is the reason? Why is this being dropped? Could be because, well, it's a 4G version of this technology. Um, the 5G version of overlaying uh, the 5G signals onto 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi has not really been deployed yet. It's not supported by very many devices, including no iPhones. So maybe the carriers and Apple are just saying, well, we're just going to wait for the 5G version of this. And this is the beginning of some 4G technologies being retired. Or it actually could be a technical side effect of the Wi-Fi 7 features, which is the other headline feature in the new iPhone. So we've got some news on the Wi-Fi 7 front in just a second. But so that is the, the significant change on the cellular side is one band is missing. Is that worth not upgrading for? Is that something actually going to be significant in practice? Probably not. This is we're well into the 5G era and the speed boost that LTE LAA used to give is now more than made up for by 5G and the 5G deployments by all the carriers. So we do kind of think that only cellular geeks uh, who really dive into the bands you're connecting to might ever even notice that this band is gone. But it is interesting to find and dig up a regression in a new iPhone model. Usually bands are being added, not taken away. The other change on the cellular front uh, that we expect with the um, iPhone 16 is that just like every year, Apple will be moving to the next Qualcomm modem chipset, and this year's modem would be the X75. Now, the X75 is Qualcomm's first um, um, 5G advanced uh, modem chipset, so it supports the 3G PP Release 18 cellular standards, the, the next evolution of 5G. And basically what this means is that this will be a more future-proof modem as 5G continues to evolve in the years ahead. This modem is ready for the next stage of that evolution, more so than the um, you know, last year's X70 or the other modems that used in the past. So this could be a Pretty significant modem chipset upgrade, even though on paper the specs look basically the same. We won't know for certain if this modem chipset is inside the new iPhones until they're actually torn down because that's the sort of uh, low-level details that Apple never discloses publicly until somebody tears the, the iPhone down and melts the chips and figures out what's actually inside there. So that's the, the cellular evolution that we might have coming with the iPhone 16. Now, the other headline feature on the connectivity front with the iPhone 16 is that it is bringing out Wi-Fi 7. So this is the new 
evolution of the Wi-Fi standards that is substantially almost five times faster theoretically than the Wi-Fi 6 standard. This is a you know basically the, the next big evolution of the Wi-Fi industry standards and we've been kind of stuck in the Wi-Fi 6 era for quite a while. There was a evolution of Wi-Fi 6 kind of an interim step towards Wi-Fi 7 that used 6 gigahertz spectrum called Wi-Fi 6E that has been out for several years but has been very slow to be deployed. Uh, last year that came out on, on the iPhone 15 but only on the iPhone 15 Pro models. The regular iPhone 15 did not get Wi-Fi 6E. This year Apple is, is jumping both the iPhone 16 Pro and the 16 regular to Wi-Fi 7. And as we said last year, we were expecting that this was going to happen. A lot of the industry seemed to be skipping over Wi-Fi 6E and was going to jump straight to Wi-Fi 7. The Wi-Fi 7 standard was finalized earlier in 2024. And now we think this is the beginning of the wave of Wi-Fi 7 devices coming out. So again, this is a great feature to have in your phone, but it probably will not matter to you in any practical sense anytime soon because a Wi-Fi 7 radio on a phone only really matters if you're talking to Wi-Fi 7 compatible routers and hotspots and everything like that. And those are just now barely peeking into the market. This is going to be mattering over the next three to five years. But well, it's always good to have more future proofing and having the seeing the beginning of this technology pushing into phones, which is great. We've already seen a few Android phones with Wi-Fi 7. Now this is the, the first of the iPhone lineup and we expect we'll just see Wi-Fi 7 going mainstream from here on out. Now, the other big connectivity headline feature with the iPhone 16 is not exclusive to the iPhone 16, and that is satellite messaging. Now, if you remember back with the iPhone 14, two years ago, Apple brought out emergency SOS satellite messaging. Um, they jumped ahead of the rest of the industry to be really the first mainstream device that had cellular device that had satellite connectivity built right into it, but it was limited to just doing SOS text. Um, so very, very limited capability, but it was there and it has saved actually quite a few lives in the two years since it was deployed. And it was deployed on all iPhone 14 models. The iPhone 15 had that same satellite capable radio in it. Uh, and they, at the same time, they rolled out emergency SOS for roadside assistance, not just 911 level emergencies. Um, so still very limited. This year, Apple is rolling out satellite text messaging, not just for emergencies, but you know, text messaging so to say, hey, what do you want to get for dinner? Or I'm going to be here. Or hey, I have a bad signal. I can't call you right now. Text messaging that works basically anywhere you've got a satellite view of the sky. And the cool thing about this is this is not a feature exclusive to the iPhone 16. It is being rolled out to the four, iPhone 14 and 15 too. They're using the same Global Star satellite capabilities. It's just rolling out to coincide with the iPhone 16 launch. And all the other iPhones the, the last two years will be getting support as well with the iOS 18 software update that is coming out next week. So satellite messaging is coming to a whole lot of recent iPhones. And that is a big feature for safety and communication and just general usability. And we are excited to see this going mainstream. Now, this is still very limited messaging. You're not going to be sending photos. It still takes a very long time to send each text message. But you now have that option. And it's we expect this to continue to be more and more satellite capabilities rolling out. And you know, this is not just an Apple thing. We'll be seeing uh, T-Mobile and Starlink starting to roll out satellite messaging later this year. And that will be compatible with all recent T-Mobile phones, whether they're Apple or not. So satellite messaging is becoming a thing. And uh, this is just the start of the always connected era. So those are the major connectivity uh, improvements that we are seeing in the new um, iPhone 16 lineup. And well, are you excited about any of this? L let us know. Are you disappointed about LTE Band 46 going away? Let us know. Or what else do you think about the new iPhone 16 line? Let us know about that as well. And well, well, we'll see what we come back with next year when we cover whatever they bring out in the iPhone 17. Rumor mill has it that next year might be the first time that Apple actually brings out their own 5G cellular chip instead of relying on Qualcomm. So we got that to look forward to when uh, next year rolls around. Until then, well, <laughs> there'll be plenty of other news here at the Mobile Internet Resource Center, so stay tuned. These videos are brought to you by our premium members. 
mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.